We're at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Dayton, Ohio. It's a magnificent place, as we're going to see. We start out in the early years. This is the right military flyer. And they progress up there. Of course, the walls of the building or one of the hangars are loaded with information. Nineteen sixteen wind tunnel. Third of an aircraft engine. This is a SPAD 7. Other engines. V designs them. Now we're going to get into World War I. Newport 28. Earlier I forgot the Curtis Jenny. Very famous American aircraft. A later wind tunnel. This is the Fokker D1. Sopwith Camel. The Halberstadt. German aircraft. Now from that Fokker aircraft, observation balloons. Huge. And as you can see, a lot more to come. Another German aircraft, plus a lot of engines. Yes, an aerial torpedo and a model of the launching device. It's titled the post-war years. Some used for Mexican border patrol, but other engines, Liberty, Caproni. Twin engine. Twin engine, Martin. The intermeers after the war. Absolutely remarkable. Curtis D-12 engine. We're going to get into the auto gyro. Boeing P-26A, it's called a pea shooter. More to come, Martin D-10. And the Martin. Ryan PT-16, Northrop A-17 attack aircraft. Look at the flaps. This is called an O-52 observation. PT-19 trainer. <laughs> yes. Intramures observation. 017. Before World War II started, Americans learned some flying in Great Britain. This is a uh, Hawker Hurricane. And that was the interwar years. And up here above is the Tiger Moth. We're going to the next room.
Now we're in the World War II exhibit. A little opinion here. Does this not look like a P-40 with a radial engine? A Seversky P-35. Just plain rare aircraft. Get to the Japanese Zero in a minute. B-18A, one of our early bombers. It was not Boeing, it was Douglas. And here's the famous Link trainer. Put the canopy down. Look at the way the turret comes out. transmit the weather open. Holds up. <laughs> Another aircraft up in the yeah, top, it looks so. like a Stinson. <laughs> Japanese, we always heard of the Zero. This is the Mitsubishi Zero, right here. Bomb Pearl Harder. That's all the part of the wing that folded up, just the wing tips. Somebody didn't plan too well. Now here's P-40, the famous uh, mouth design. And that was Claire Chenault, General Claire Chenault, and the Flying Tigers, P-40 was known for. B-25. With its twin tails. Other aircraft in the ceiling. And some very, very rare aircraft. Listen, I don't know. It's a nomenclature. It's not identified. But back to World War II, and this is the Bell Air Cobra. It's done with snow on the ground, you know. I think we sold a lot of them to the Russians. It was known as the P-39, and the engine was not in the front. It was in the mid. You can see the exhaust just behind the pilot's cockpit. And here's the, here's the layout. There's the front, the propeller. Of course, there's the bullets. Cannon, actually. And then here is the engine, which would be behind the pilot. Actually, the snow is because they used them in Alaska fighting the Japanese. They're talking about the Mitchell uh, B-25s that, that, that took off for and bombed Tokyo right at the beginning of the war. The B-25 is one of those aircraft. The B-25 was used in the Tokyo raid. Jimmy Doolittle. I'm kind of guessing there's no nomenclature. There's maybe a Douglas Dauntless, but it's a dive bomber. But I think the Navy used this more than the Army, or the Air Force, I should say. Again, back to some of the rare aircraft here. This is really an interesting one. Notice the word Army on the, wind, on the wing? It wasn't the Air Force until into World War II. And that's a Stearman, it looks like, training plane. And here's sort of a beach craft. I say sort of. The British aircraft, a bow fighter it's called. We're gonna to get to the Memphis Bell, which is a B-17. Here's a B-24. Yeah, B-24 Liberator. Twenty-four was used in Italy, and here is an Italian fighter. Interesting association here. Here it is, it's been here since May, is the Memphis Bell, B-17. Note the bombs on there, those are the bombing runs. All successful. And the crew. crew was selected for a special nationwide bond tour to encourage citizens the to support work. the war effort. Here's the reality of it all. Look at that. 54 record, nearly 500 men failed to return. Here's another one, Schweinfurt. Of the 291 bombers departed, 60 were shot down and 600 airmen lost. Memphis Bell successfully did 25 missions. And you don't think some of the bombers a little shop worn? I believe they were. The Memphis Bell. 
Yeah, the B-17. Memphis Bell. Reality. The way five of the crew survived to become POWs. Now there's a Spitfire there in the background. Here's one of the very early Mustangs without the uh, bubble canopy. The Mustang and the Spitfire. When you get into the escort aircraft, here is the Mustang, the newer one with the bubble canopy, and there's a P-47 Thunderbolt there. Mustang. Thunderbolt. And of course the P-38 Lockheed Lightning twin engine. They had the B-25. This was a B-26. A little more rare. Beechcraft up there, used in the war. In the D-Day landing, they used gliders that landed inland, and there is one of them right there. Known as the DC-3 in commercial work, here is the plane that towed the gliders and also dropped parachutists out of its own air fuselage. Getting into the enemy, here's the famous Messerschmitt with the upside-down 12-cylinder engine. Yes, the cylinders face downward, camshafts, everything were below. Interesting. British Mosquito, which had a lot of components made out of wood. Then you got the B-24, our aircraft similar to B-17 in a sense, so this has twin tails. Spitfire and the Messerschmitt. All right, this is the Mosquito again. Cockpit tucked between two engines. So-called buzz bomb, the Germans. This is called the V1, yeah. or is the buzz bomb. This is a German V2 rocket on its mobile trailer. JU-88, Junkers, German. This is with the Battle of Britain. A lot of these aircraft were the ones that came over Britain. This is a guided bomb. After seeing the rockets and the uh, other vehicles, this was guided from the aircraft. Now from the Junkers, Germans got into rocket planes. The ME-163. Like the Mustang, the Spitfire developed four-bladed prop. I think they eventually had a five. This is a Merlin engine. See the supercharger on the right? V12. This is a Folkwolf 190. One of the later Folkwolfs. Interesting test bomb. Here's the German jet plane, ME-262. And here's the engine. And here is the cannon, German cannon. So the ME-262, German jet plane. So we saw the Thunderbolt earlier. This is an older version. P-47. This is called the Curtis Commando. It was mainly used in the China theater flying over the Himalayas. Stylized model of the Himalayas and some of the routes they would take through the canyons. and They weren't necessarily high altitude aircraft. Yeah, Curtis. Commando. Another look at the Curtis Commando. This is an yeah, A-20. Douglas. Fought in areas like New Guinea. And uh, notice the t-shirts and everything. Well, they're simulating where they were in a lot of battlefields. Douglas aircraft. 
And finally, we get to the B-29. Of course, there's the Japanese aircraft under the wing, but this is the type of aircraft that dropped the nuclear bomb on Japan. Bigger engines than the B-17, and also the fuselage was pressurized so they could fly at higher altitudes. Another Japanese aircraft, a Kiwanishi. From the tail of B-29. Japanese aircraft. They all didn't come back in one piece. On the B-29, next to it are two models of the two nuclear bombs that they dropped. This was called Fat Man. And this was called Little Boy. This B-29 is the one that dropped the second nuclear bomb on Japan. Bad boy. Well, we got a Navy aircraft in here, but this is a PBY. Observation and rescue aircraft. Those are rubber boats, which suggest rescue. People they picked up. This is a P-61 Black Shadow night fighter. Late entry into the war. Just look at the size of the propellers and how close they come to the ground. This is a Japanese, uh, well, it's, it's a kamikaze, essentially, because it didn't return when they used it. Some of the interesting exhibits, evolution of the uniforms of the Air Force, all the way to space. Here they've got jackets from World War II. Now we're entering the Korean War exhibit. Oh, do we remember these troop and cargo carriers? We've been seeing in the background C-124. So it hovers over the whole Korean War display. C-124. Oh, and early helicopters. Military Air Transport Service. And that's one of those double-deck carriers. And the fuselage of a B-29 that dropped bombs over Korea. Guided bombs used in Korea. Of course, we're in the jet age, B-45, four engine. The B-45. And the tail of the B-45, four engine jet bomber. They even used the T-6, they call the Mosquito in Korea. The jet age, which used to be the P-80, Oh, the F-94, highly modified. Starfire. And the F-84, Thunderjet. And the B-26C, a modified World War II aircraft. And of course, the MiG, the Russian-built jet. And they opposed the F-86, North American. The MiG, the MiG and the F-86. The real dramatic air story in Korea. Now, F-82G, this is a twin Mustang, very rare. Two Mustang fuselages. They actually flew them in Korea. Oh, it's called the Twin Mustang. What makes this museum so great? This unique aircraft. Yep. All right, here's the F-80. The first T-34 
jet aircraft to fight in Korea. Sometimes earlier called the P-80, one of America's first jet aircraft. Now we gotta go to the Vietnam aircraft. This is a B-52. B-52. Thank you very much. It's not only Vietnam, they call it Southeast Asia. B-52. Still using propeller aircraft, A-1E Sky Raider. Look at the munitions in the wing. F-105 Thunder Chief. Carries a lot of munitions. Along with two crew members. Very large aircraft. As you can see, the B-52 hovers over everything. And this is the A-7D Corsair. A different look. Very controversial aircraft. The F-111, swing wing all-purpose aircraft. And it got the name Aardvark. This is the RB-66 destroyer. F-4C Phantom. Another very unusual looking aircraft. Carried a lot of munitions. And precision guided missiles of this era. Propeller aircraft were used as well, and here is the, what they what we call a constellation. The military has its own numbers, but you sure recognize it. Radar aircraft. On top and below. Another F-105 Thunder Chief. They called it Memphis Bell. Again, an aircraft capable of carrying a lot of munitions. And the enemy, MIG-21. MiG-21. Wicked. MIG-17. And a little better view of our constellation, misnamed. At least you can get to see the, the totality of this aircraft. Saw those thunder teeth look at them like a hungry birds getting fed, air refueling. The C-7 Caribou. Parachute delivery. C-123 provider, again, this old technology, radial, tech, radial engine, the provider, ranch hand. In 1961, United States and Vietnam was a lot of helicopters used. This was called a Jolly Green Giant, and the Bell Iroquois 1. North American Bronco. Looks like a precursor to the Warthog that we have today. Twin tail Cessnas. Also used. 
The B-26 from World War II was used. Our radar aircraft again, towering above it all with the tri-tail. This is a British Canberra, but the uh, military liked it so much they had a number of them built by Martin to replace the B-26, which we just saw. Another aircraft used, McDonald Voodoo. And of course, the North American F-100. And of course, the B-52, again, hovering over it all. I'm going to show this right now instead of uh, after the Cold War gallery because this is a new F-22 fighter. I don't think they have room for it somewhere else. Now you can see the characteristic of the warped wings and various other nuances of the wind tunnel and stealth. Again, see the bump of the wing there. This is the bulge. Very unusual shape. This is an augmented turbofan engine. Now the Cold War gallery. The Cold War. The Berlin airlift and all that, and the Russian, the wall. Germany was also the works. This is magnificent. The Cold War V-36 in the future we're going to see the stealth well we remember the b-52 earlier this is the b-36 which came before it six engine pusher prop and of course this reminder thermonuclear bomb as i say again the cold war gallery They just show a model of this because I guess it doesn't exist now, but they did have one. Convair XC-99. A Canadian called a Canuck. Again, the B-36 wing is right behind it. A similar version of that, the type of aircraft is here. The Air Force. Modified F-86. B-36, of course, had jettison or added jet engines along with the pusher process. Look at this revision of the Mustang. This is the F-82, which is a twin Mustang. Push your props of the B-36 and props of the Mustang. And then there's the B-29 was converted to what they call the B-50, improved engines and all that. This F-86 has extra fuel tanks. It flew uh, flights over China and Russia. Secret flights. One of the early General Electric jet engines, J-47. Just for a moment, you have to say, how great is this museum? F-84 Thunderstreak. Um, F-86 exposed, showing its structure. Pretty complicated, F-86 skeleton. This is a KC-97 cargo aircraft. KC-97 B-50 Albatross Yes, seaplane CH-21B Helicopter Interesting shape Of course, up in the air 
<laughs> various other aircrafts of certain ages. This jet aircraft is a thunder flash and it is launched from below a B-36, which you see in the back. Like that. There's the B-36 wing and the pusher props. In the original design stage, this was one of the two wheels that the landing gear made up of the B-36. They changed their plan. Other guided missiles. Now the B-58 Hustler, which was a Delta Wing bomber, four engine. This is an ejection seat for over 600 mile an hour ejection. Look at the pod underneath. Delivery systems. The B-58 Hustler. That large pod was that had two thermonuclear bombs in it. B-58. Wicked. One engine so far back on the wing hanging way out on the end. Incredible aircraft. Unbelievable. Delta wing, notice no stabilizer. We saw the B-58 Hustler. This is the B-47, six engine strategic air command bomber. Three in each wing. And note the landing gear, major gear in the middle with guide out on the wings. Another Delta wing aircraft, the Convair F-102. Now we're getting into some of the newer aircraft. Of course, the U-2 we'll see. We're getting into some of the stealth aircraft. And of course, the, uh, the XR-71. Stealth bomber. And in between them, the XR-71. And the XR-71. Again, but here is the engine nacelle, and here is the engine. Pratt and Whitney. The F-106 Delta Dart coming after the F-102, which we just saw a moment ago. The U-2 reconnaissance. And the wing goes on forever. Another view of the uh, B-47, which is the six engine bomber. This is Lockheed F-104, which has the shortest wingspan. Just can't believe it. That can be shown by this view right here. F-101 Voodoo. F-4 Wild Weasel. And the Voodoo. These 104s were modified for a desert storm. F4C Phantom 3. And there's that other Phantom modified for a desert storm. We're in the area called the Cold War. And of course, we remember uh, East Germany and the problems with Russia. 
that is included with a portion of the wall. This is a Hound Dog aerial launched supersonic missile. There's the engine under there. And then the nacelle for launching off of the aircraft. It's up above. A stealth fighter. Interesting shapes from all angles. The tail assembly. Another view. A stealth fighter. This is an MIG. It's called a Flogger E. MiG-23. Look at some of the interesting things. They must have taken off on rough airfields. Controlling the air, going in the engine. And a lot of interesting stuff. This is also a swing wing aircraft. And here's where the wing swings. This is a steady and very straightforward speed. Twin engine. We showed the TF-111 earlier uh, use in uh, Vietnam, but here it's just another one, all camouflaged and showing all the capabilities that it has. And it's a swing wing aircraft as well. Lots of choices in the F-111. I think you probably have to say that this Russian aircraft is the equivalent of the F-111. Then you come away from all that streamlining and here is the stealth and it almost looks like origami folded paper. It's the F-117 stealth fighter. The stealth. Something that's not so stealthy is the A-10 Warthog. The container for the shells, this is the cannon they have in the front. The Warthog, you can see where it gets its name. C-130, which is being used today. Great transport. This is one, however, it's used for other purposes. It's called the Angel of Death. Real vertical takeoff, and these engines swing forward for forward movement. Vertical takeoff off spray. The Marine Corps uses a lot of these. This is a British aircraft. It's a tornado used in Desert Storm. Another one of the F 111's test vehicle. These are radar jamming vehicles, swing wing. Tail's interesting as well. Helicopters like this, Sikorsky, are gunships. Refueling, guns out the side. Here's a comparison here, U.S. Air Force F-15. And right next to it is a Russian jet. Probably it's equivalent. The MiG-29. The F-15. And the MiG-29. F-15 can carry a little bit. Fuel and weapons. Now we have the B-1 bomber. Incredibly interesting shape. F-117 
more engines, two on either side, and here's some of the armament. It is also a swing wing aircraft. The B-1. And just wings swept back. Of course, the Thunderbirds are the uh, flying team of the Air Force, and here's an F-100, one of the uh, first ones. The current uh, Thunderbirds are the UZ F-16. I have to show the rear of the Blackbird. One of the training jets of the Air Force. Some of these planes are almost organic. So we have the B-1. We have the stealth bomber, or the flying wing. The stealth bomber. The B-2. And how spectacular it was. And now the missile gallery. The Titan, the Thor, and many others. Early warning satellite. A space sled for shooting around in space when you're up there. Jupiter. Why don't you take an elevator up and you get a, another view of the rockets halfway there. Some of the early lifting body models that were made for the space shuttle. Space gallery and research. Overwhelming. And there's the Valkyrie, that white aircraft in the background. This is the new room. Multi-stage rocket. That's the top portion. Here are the boosters. Now we're back to some earlier aircraft. Prototype research vehicles. Counter-rotating prop. Two Allison engines, separate drive shafts that go to the front propeller. Very unique vehicle. This is the Bell P-59, first American jet. Now for a moment, look up and look at the engines that are coming out of the back of that supersonic white plane. Apollo 15. Bell XB, or X-1B. The T-33, look at the size of the bubble canopy. I start out as the P-80. Now stand back and look at that Valkyrie jet. There's the wing, it's Delta wing. And the engine platform and the tail. Convair XF-92. Douglas X-3. Mm -hmm. 
the engine from the Northrop jet. Very experimental. This is just unreal. There's so much to see. Look at here, here's a jet aircraft with a propeller on the front. Again, experimental stuff. So much. Piggyback jet engine here. And up above, the reverse wing aircraft. That's the nose. F-107. Republic. Okay, here's the Valkyrie. It's huge. This is the Lockheed XF-12A. It came before the Blackbird. Helicopter with the blades out like on a wing. And vertical takeoff. Hawker Sydney. Vertical takeoff. Avril Canada. Aerocar. Ryan Firebee. So much to see. Experimental cockpits. Northrop. F-16 test vehicle for all kinds of flight control systems. They'll have to come back to this, the old turboprop Martin liner, I guess. And then they have an experimental cockpit on the front. This is Northrop McDonald's uh, entry into the fighter plane of the future. The F-22 became that one. This was not chosen. We saw the F-22 earlier. This is sort of an earlier test vehicle, wind tunnel vehicle. My proposal, a pretty radical aircraft. And the engine. Flying boxcar, satellite catcher it's called. Yes, this satellite snatcher does snatch a satellite coming down. With the parachutes. And room to put it. We're now getting into transports on other vehicles, including the presidential aircraft. But this is a C-141 four-engine jet transport. C-141 Starlifter. It's a big aircraft. The C-5 came after that, but this is a four-engine jet. Very, very unique-looking aircraft. Yes. We're going to show you a picture of what this wing does differently. It is flying, and the wing swings. Takes off vertically. Oh, tell me what that is. Maybe that's a new P-40, haha, <laughs> with the uh, shark's t mouth. Now for the space shuttle. Why not? Getting all the way up now, going to enter the space shuttle. Some of the intricates, intricacies of the space shuttle. There's the area we went into earlier with the experimental and prototype vehicles. And then we come over here, and there's a few more of them. And then, of course, the space shuttle display, and then the presidential jets are beyond. 707, similar to Kennedy and, and Reagan.
This is the one uh, Kennedy LBJ. Look at those engines. They listen. Now this is uh, President Roosevelt's. What a fabulous exhibit. This is Harry Truman. The Independence, Independence, Missouri. I like this. And this is President Eisenhower's constellation. It's called the Columbine. I'm up at the Columbine and picking up some of the rest of the aircraft. And we're going to walk through it. Pilot's compartment. Oh, flight engineer. Navigator. Very tight. The hallway all plasticized off. Even had a movie projector. And the restroom for the president. Whoa. Look at the view. You're flying with the presidents. Now let's pick up the constellations. Twin tails. Tri-tail. Jet stars. Roman Gulfstream. On the side of Truman's is that. There's Harry Truman's and Roosevelt. This is a magnificent exhibit. What a place.